It's really good to be back in the South. I was uh, doing a show a while back in New York City. And I learned a couple of things. Number one, when you're from the South, you can't say New York City without saying it like New York City. You sound like you're in a Pace Picante commercial, don't you? Always. And here's the other thing I figured out. People up North think that we talk funny. Imagine that. After my presentation, I had a gentleman come up from New York. He goes, hey, you know what? You're, you're a funny guy, but i got to be honest with you. I couldn't understand half the stuff you were saying. Because you talk so funny. You people from Abilama talk so funny. I'm like, OK. Abilama? How can you mess that up, right? He was from New Jersey, I guess. But you know, the, the funny thing is the joke's going to be in on him, because when he gets to heaven, and finds out that everybody up there talks like we do? Yeah. Can you imagine this guy walking up to the pearly gates? St. Peter standing there you know, cooking ribs on a grill he made out of a 55-gallon drum. You know? <laughs> Instead of a flowing robe, St. Peter's got on overalls, a Charlie Daniels for president t-shirt. <laughs> Instead of a halo, there's a John Deere cap just floating right above his head. Yeah. And up, here comes up the walk. Here comes Jesus to greet everybody. He looks like Uncle Jed from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> and guess how Jesus said, Hey, y'all, welcome to heaven. Happy to have you here. Hope you enjoyed the trip. Hope you grabbed me some burgers. Now, my name is Jesus. You can call me JC. <laughs> Everybody up here does. I want you to grab yourself a burger and then go on up to the big house because we got jugs of sweet tea and my mama made tater salad. Best tater salad you ever put in your mouth, I swear to God. I'm sorry, Daddy. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to say that. And of course, here comes the Virgin Mary. She looks like Paula Dean. <laughs> Hi, y'all. And then the guy from New York opens his mouth, and Jesus goes, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute there, boy. Where are you from? New York City? Son, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> we have a lot of tornadoes down where I live. Do you guys have tornadoes here? Do you get tornadoes? Do you? Oh, man, I just can't stand the tornadoes. But you know, the thing I, I can't stand really is how the TV news covers the tornadoes. Have you noticed this? You never see like a guy with a PhD being interviewed after a tornado, do you? It's like the news director at the station, probably from New York City, is going out of his way to make Southerners look bad. You know, he probably tells the cameraman, look, take your camera, go out there to the tornado, and interview a dumbass, okay? Just find, find a fella. And of course they do. You know, you never see a tornado go through like a college campus or a research facility. You never see a guy on, on there going, well, sir, can you tell us what happened? Well, certainly. My wife, Mary Claire, and I were sitting out on the veranda drinking a toddy. Mary Claire makes the best toddies. We've been married Let's see, we got married the year I graduated law school. So we've been married 30 years. Been drinking that woman's toddy ever since. And we're sitting there on the veranda, and I look off to the west, and I say, dear, that looks like a thundercloud coming. We might want to get the dogs in. Now, we've got three Afghan hounds. Do you like Afghans? I love them. They're great dogs. But the wind whipped up, and I said, okay, honey, let's get inside. We had no more got our toddies and our dogs in the house and got in the basement when the storm hit. I could hear it. I told my wife, I said, you know what, that sounds like a freight train coming up the drive, but I knew it wasn't because we don't live anywhere near a freight train, right? And when it was over, I went outside. It was terrible. There was debris in the hot tub. <laughs> it was just devastating. I walked around the back of the house and a limb had fallen on Mary Claire's Land Rover. If I've told that woman once, I've told her a thousand times, put the Land Rover in the garage. <laughs> you never see that, do you? You always see some good old boy. They go out and find this guy. It's always the same guy, I think. Little bitty round fella, heavy set, always wearing a dirty T-shirt. You know, he's got on like a, uh, a shirt with a nameplate on it, but it ain't his name because his wife bought it at a yard sale. <laughs> and made him wear it because it was only a dollar. Yeah. You know, he's got a John Deere cap. He just got off a layaway. And, you know, his teeth look like he's been eating peanut butter brownies. And of course, he's got a, a tire gauge in the pocket, you know, to keep the house level. Yeah. 
one eye looking at the camera, one eye looking over here. Yeah. And it's always the same. Well, sir, can you tell us what happened? Well, yeah, me and Erlene was in the trailer, and we... Is this someone you know, ma'am? I think I'm hitting home with this one. Well, yeah, me and Erlene was in the trailer. We was uh, drinking beer and eating cheese doodles. And uh, we was watching The Biggest Loser on the TV. I love watching The Biggest Loser, don't you? Always makes me feel good about myself. And all of a sudden, I heard what sounded like a freight train coming up the driveway. And I looked over at Erlene and I said, hey, there's a freight train coming up the driveway. And before she could respond, the trailer broke in half and Erlene was just sucked out through the top of the trailer. I thank the Lord I held onto my cheese doodles. What was that? Oh, no, no, she wasn't hurt. She landed on the neighbor's cow. Smothered a couple of chickens. Oh, wait a minute. Don't turn the camera off. You want to hear a joke? Here's a joke. What does a tornado and a redneck divorce have in common? Somebody's losing a trailer.